what an amazing Eurovision spring we have had. And now it's time for me and my Eurovision angel Jens to look back at our highlights from Turin. My name is Krista. For many years I have been trying to find the answer to the question. What makes the Eurovision Song Contest such a special phenomenon? I thought I would crack the code when I participated myself in 2013, but I still want to know all about its magic. So this year my road to Eurovision continues. On the road to Turin I want to discover the fascinating stories behind the Eurovision Song Contest. Welcome to Krista's Road to Eurovision! So, what did you think about the contest this year? Well, it was a very special year, but one thing I learned, I can multitask. Yeah, you definitely can. And you had some really interesting conversations as yeah, well. Yeah, I did. I made a compilation. Let's take a look. Fly, the baby, fly. Reaching the stars above. Hi, Sheldon. Hello there. How are you? Sam. How are you? Hi, Laureen. How are you? I'm great. Hi. So nice to meet you. How are you? How are you? How are you? How are you? I am fantastic. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me. It's amazing. I'm so happy and I'm, I, I feel all that love and all that support that uh, Eurofans give me. I was standing in the arena today, like looking around. I was thinking, this is weird. Like, I was singing in my mum's kitchen. You can pick the question. And yet I came to me. She put her arms around me. How do you want people to remember you by? I am so sorry for you that you didn't win. Who is your idol? Michael Jackson and Quincy Jones. Hey, here it comes. No shoes for me, please. What was your first or favorite Eurovision memory? Of course, 1999, okay. when I became second. Yeah. Karaoke, my favorite karaoke was uh, Euphoria. Whenever I sing it on stage, the, the audience sings it louder than me. I'm like, shut up, guys, let me sing my song. <laughs> it's just every time uh, different people under the <laughs> mask. Every time. Don't believe them. <laughs> Don't believe in them. It really speaks from the heart, isn't it? And there's a lyric in the song, um, the light shines bright through those who broke inside. I think so many people in the community can feel that feeling of feeling so broken. Do you feel a lot of support from other artists? There's no hint of stress or anything. Looks can be deceiving. <laughs> um, the award, the official moment. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's running with the interview. You want my job? Yeah. Should I take your job? How do you want people to remember you after you die? <laughs> so, Krista, you had fun yourself. I mean, you saw the show, you met the fans. You did a little performance at your club even. Oh yes, I did and I enjoyed it so much. I was living my best life in the Eurovision bubble and I loved it.
Welcome to a new episode of Krista's Road to Eurovision. I will provide you with fantastic new Eurovision news. A few weeks ago, I started my road to Eurovision. From Rotterdam, I drove to Antwerp to speak to Kate Ryan. How did you experience this whole Eurovision circus? Oh, if I would have a second chance, I would do it all over again. A bit different, yeah. but I would do it, do it all over again. Um, of course, it was, uh, it was a bit of a sad story as well because I didn't make it through the semi-finals. Um, I think Eurovision gave me an enormous boost yeah. in my career. I mean, I was able to travel all over the, the world because yeah. of that. I was invited to visit Anne-Marie David in her home in France and oh boy, she had stories to tell. How did that change your life? Did it change your life? Oh. <laughs> Yes, you're joking. Yeah, <laughs> of course it did. I don't know. I did not win Eurovision, so I don't know what, what no, happened. I mean, yeah. No, I mean, it was a bit different from today. Yeah. Because at that time, uh, Eurovision lasts long. It lasts almost three years without having one day off. Oh, so you had like, if you won, then you had a schedule of everything oh, you had exactly, to do. Exactly, okay. exactly. And it yeah. was scheduled from the first minute I won. Bye, Bye. Marie. Bye. See you next year! Next year we come here! <laughs> After that, I met Jan Steers in Paris. And can you imagine it was snowing? Actually, I brought the Swiss weather here. <laughs> you brought it here, oh my god. Hey, let's go sit here under yeah, the tree. Maybe it's better here. Yeah. Your vision gave me so many things that I cannot describe them. Yeah. Uh, but I would say, like, uh, I was in a period of time that I needed to feel legitimate yeah. as an artist and as a musician. Yeah. Actually, a lot of artists ask me, like, do you think I should do it? Do you think I should try? I'm like, go, because it's not an experience you can compare with another TV show or another thing, because it's really unique. Next up, Zurich to drink some hot chocolate with Gendry. Tell me, because I'm really curious, of course, like how was the Eurovision experience for you? It's, it was overwhelming. I think that's the best word yeah. to describe it in both ways, positive and negative. The, the people you meet, everything was like mostly positive. Everything's mostly positive. Uh, right after, there was like a little negative side, you know, like this kind of hole, because I disappointed people that I, I felt guilty that I was bad. And oh, that yeah. was a hole that I had to get through, yeah. but I got through. And now we have this hot chocolate that is typical here in Zurich, Swiss, right? Swiss hot chocolate. Yeah, Swiss hot chocolate. So now we're going to enjoy this. Prost. Prost. Or whatever you say here. It's right. I want to show you all again how beautiful Lugano is. The city where the first Eurovision Song Contest took place. Now I'm going to see if I can find the concert hall where the show was broadcasted. I found the place where Eurovision Magic started back in 1956. I'm here and it used to be a super beautiful building, but nowadays, not so much. Finally, I arrived in Torino, the city where it all happened. Here I met my new best friends, Donatella and Fulvio, and they showed me around the city. And because we all need some culture, I visited the Rai Museum. And are there any Eurovision related things in this museum? It's, uh, let's say, the, the most uh, popular part of the museum. And there we like to share the history of television in four TVs and we share Sanremo. Sanremo is our most important TV program, the long-lasting um, music program, and the winner of Sanremo goes to uh, Eurovision. And we share the winner of Sanremo since 1958. But as this museum like to embrace the present, then we have the Maneskin, we have the winner of the last Sanremo, and really people can dance and in the museum. <laughs> During my stay in Turin, I had a euphoric moment. I had an interview revealing and healing with the one and only Lorene. Tonight, tonight, 
The first time that I saw you, everyone went crazy about the song. What made me crazy about you was the fact that you were so authentic and that you really were, for me, the alpha female. I always knew that I was a woman deep inside. You were embracing that female empowerment. Correct me if I'm wrong, but can I put the word feminist on the table? Are you a feminist? I'm a feminist when I want to be a feminist, you know? You know, wherever there is imbalance, where you can tell, like, wait a minute, I do not get the same treatment as a man or somebody else, then I am a feminist, you know? And I am, so wherever there is an imbalance, if there is one, then I'm there. So yes, I'm a feminist, because there's still an imbalance, you know, between men and women. That's one imbalance. Let's just go there, like, and there are other imbalances. In and where does it come from? Because your grandmother, and your mother as well, but especially your grandmother, it started all there? Yeah, well, all the women from my mother's side has fought really hard for their freedom, you know. So my, my great-grandmother, she was happily married to her, to her husband, and he died at the war at the time, and they had two children. And so naturally, at that time, they remarry, and the family chooses the partner. But she didn't want that because she was she was still in love with her husband obviously but she didn't want that and so what she did was and they were very wealthy she took her two children she dressed up as a man late night um and so she fleed from one city to another and she got like a, a sanctuary there with relatives and she opened her own little store and she raised her two children all by herself till she died she was dressed as a man with my mother you know, they were also supposed to marry her with a with a an, a man she didn't want, and she, and she got me when she was 16, and she fled from her country when she was 14. Met my father that was older than her. For so many years, she thought she, that she was in Germany, but she was in Sweden because she never went to school. You know, she was 22 when she had us six, all by herself. So there you go. Creativity without purpose is not interesting enough for me. I, I can't create without knowing why I create. Why do I do what I do? Why am I sitting here with you? It's like, and I think that comes from my, 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 the women in my family. Why are you doing things? How do you add to a freedom? Like, you know, see? So it's almost like a legacy. For me, I need to continue on the work that my mother and my grandmother and my great-grandmother did about balancing things up, not only between men and women, but, you know, all injustices as much as you can. A couple of years ago, you came out as bisexual in an interview in Sweden, uh, which was a big deal for many people, including me. Um, is that something that you feel very important to do as a public figure? There are people that are not really... Uh, uh, secure with talking about these things. For me, I, I'm in a space where I really believe that, you know, I don't have any judgment there. Love is where you find it. So if somebody says, if somebody tell me like, I'm completely hetero, like, how do you know that? How do you really know that? I, I just feel it like, no, you haven't explored anything. So how do you really know that? So that's why I say it's like, okay, I believe that everybody's bisexual because, you know, Unless you haven't tried it, how do you know? <laughs> Even though we are flawless presenters, we are still only human. Sometimes things don't go according to the plan. Oh, sorry. Yes. Sorry. Hi, it's Krista. Yes, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. But now I'm gonna cut the interview here because me and Kate, we need to make some plans for our little, yeah, what, surprise performance? Moment also on stage, <laughs> wow. Moment on stage together. I so. Imagine the clothes are dressing. Oh, clothes are dressing as a you, you Yeah, exactly. Oh my God. <laughs> Paris, 174 kilometers. Do you have a special message to all the fans and people watching out there? Uh, just not to watch OutTV, because they hate Sweden. 
<laughs> okay, <laughs> now this is gonna be yours. Um, do you think that even though Luxembourg is not per per lot? One more time. So do you think that uh, even though Luxembourg is not 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 nay, no longer participating? <laughs> it's been a long time. One more time. The official travel partner of the Eurovision Song Contest 2022 and their proud certified hotels. Give it to me one more time. Please. Yes, okay. Did you know that the first Eurovision Song Contest ever took place in this beautiful city back in 1956? No, 1956. Sex, wow. I'm born again. Hello from Park de Valentino. Was it? Sorry, I have to ask it again. Was it Park de Valentino? Okay, <laughs> one more time. Hello from Park de Valentino. This is the place where the Eurovision Village boy. You can find. You <laughs> can. This is the place where you can find. Scusi. Excuse me. Can anybody let me in? I'm Eurovision royalty, hello! Scusi! Can you show the flag, by the way? Oh, the camera is here on my head <laughs> this time, but... Oh, beautiful. Hello, I'm Krista, and... Are you coming from here now? Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to come from here. Oh, wrong number, sorry. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Or go back into the closet. <laughs> or, or go back into the closet. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. Okay. Oh my god, this shower is perfect. <laughs> Hello everybody, I am on my way to Turin for the Eurovision Song Contest for my TV show Krista's Road to Eurovision. And if you love our TV show and want to see more behind the scenes material, then go to Booking.com's YouTube page. Greetings from La Bella Vita Italia! Oh my god, what a great time we have had here. Yeah. And we have had interesting conversations, met fabulous people. But you had a really interesting time on the turquoise carpet. Yes, yes, I did. Um, well, I only had one accreditation, so I had to be a little bit creative. So this is how I went. Oh, you were working hard for your money. <laughs> Camera on my head, check. Tripod, check. Positive vibes, as always, check. I think I'm carpet ready. Hey ho, let's go. Hey ho, let's go for the glow and rock and roll. Black and red, no wonder yet. Kishineu, Bucharest. Hello, how gorgeous oh do God, you look? First time when I see this. <laughs> It's like super inventive, yeah. <laughs> I only got one accreditation, so I have to be creative. Oh, okay, okay, great, great, great. How are you? I feel amazing. I feel super energized and I cannot wait to perform on that stage in the second semi-final. And yeah, full of confidence. Yeah, you are. And I love your pearl necklace. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And you may pick your question of the day. Who was your childhood crush and why? <laughs> Brooke! Oh my god, you look amazing! Thank you so much! I like Katy Perry! Yeah! Oh my god, people keep saying that to me, but no, I do not look like Katy Perry! <gasps> no, she looks like Brooke! She's a queen! <laughs> She's a queen! Uh, just pick one question! Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you can read, right? Yeah! I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw the stress in your eyes. <laughs> oh my god, it's uh, Tia Carere. 
she's an actress. And why? Uh, because I loved her uh, exotic looks and she was like super powerful. Oh, and I, uh, Zena, the warrior princess. Yeah, yeah. And Sailor Moon as well. Of yeah. course, Sailor Moon. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and the guy from Sailor Moon as well. With, the de yeah. <laughs> with who of the other Eurovision artists would you consider having a date with and why? Hmm, okay. Um, Andre, Boris, I'd go on a date with him. I think he'd take me dancing or something. I feel like I would enjoy, I would enjoy that. That's, yeah. that's a correct question. And now you win airtime on OutTV. You may sing your song. My song. Hey, stupid, that's rich. When it's coming from you, and that's rich. Well, I got nothing to prove, that's rich. You sing this. You think I just to, to you, and that's rich. Ha. Bye, bye, boy. Ha. Hola, mi bebe. Be. Hola mi bebe, bebe. llámame, 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 hola mi bebe, bebe. Woo! Can I tell you a secret? Uh, that is one of the hardest songs ever. I mean, oh, really? it really turns me on. Oh my God, that's so nice. So have, I wish you great sex on my song. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you, darling. Kisses. Just pick one question. That's your question of the day. Besides your own song, what's the most beautiful song ever written according to you and why? Voila by Barbara Pervé. Who do you love the most in the whole world, wide world, and why? I love my mom because she is my, the air that I breathe. She's my everything. I can't live without her. And you know, she's a religious woman and me being gay, it's never easy. She's the reason that I'm still alive. I love her and I live for her each and every day. So. Definitely my mom. Oh, that's beautiful. It's Mother's Day, you know that? Yes, and I'm wearing my mom outfit, so easy peasy. Give it a, a twirl. Mom, I'm sorry, but I stole your clothes. What are you scared of the most and why? I'm scared of so much things. I have weird fears. Birds is my biggest fear. Like, big birds. I, I'm so scared of them. I'm also, every day I'm scared that I get abducted. I don't know why. Okay. Aliens? No, like just someone puts me in a van or something. Okay. And I'm also a bit scared of the grocery store sometimes. <laughs> it stresses me out. <laughs> I get that. Yeah. So you would never cover uh, Anouk's birds? Uh, no, no. Yeah, I would, but I, and, and no birds in the visuals then. You look fabulous. And you win now airtime on OutTV if you want to sing your song. This is your chance? I'm not the same, no. I'm not the same, no. Baby, sometimes life can bring you down. But honey, keep your head up. Remember who you are. Yes, I am, baby. Yes, you are. I love you, <laughs> I love you too. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. So we are through for this year. Oh my God, I can't believe it's over. It was a fantastic ride, wasn't it, Jens? Well, it was definitely a ride. <laughs> it was definitely a ride. And we will see you again next year. Ciao. Ciao.